The PlayStation 5 for the last three years has been more than just a game console for me. And as corny as it sounds between the world ending every other week, as well as just being permanently tired as a 9 to 5 -er, a dad, a husband, and just a regular human being, tossing on whatever game at the end of a crappy day has just been amazing on the PS5. And by no means is this just for PlayStation. It could be PC, Xbox, or Nintendo Switch. But today there is a new PS5 which has been redesigned, so I'm gonna be checking it out. Okay, so I am gonna jump into unboxing this real soon, but I do wanna mention if you already have a PlayStation 5, chances are you don't really need this one. This PlayStation 5 is for someone who hasn't already gotten one yet, or really if you just need a replacement or secondary system for any reason. Still, getting into it, Sony does give you these clips which do act as your stand, as well as the DualSense controller, which is quite literally my favorite game controller of all time. You've also got this digital code for Modern Warfare 3. I really can't wait to get destroyed by kids in this one. Lastly, you have the power cable, HDMI, as well as the PlayStation 5 itself. As for what's new here, it's obviously the size and design, but there is one thing you can't see that is an upgrade, and I will get to that. Off the bat though, it really is noticeably smaller. I can't say it has much of a practical advantage for most people, but one thing for sure, it'll be great for people who do need to move this around. If you've got a bounce from the living room TV setup to make room for Cocomelon, or if you are back and forth from school so you've got to pack a bag, this will definitely be easier to do so, although not much different than before. Now one of the small design changes here are the tiny PlayStation emblems on the bottom side of the plate, and of course the division between the matte and glossy sides. For the stand though, there are these tiny slots in the slit and they just pop in to help keep the PlayStation sturdy while horizontal and that's it. Of course there's the disk drive here as well and honestly I don't actually remember the last time I used a disk. So I might end up removing the disk drive if I end up getting the replacement plates. Now I am torn on the aesthetic personally since I'm not really a big fan of the two-tone plates, one being glossy, the other being matte. Then again, I imagine we'll be seeing official and third-party plates any day now, so if this isn't for you, it doesn't have to be. Also, what's up with the stand? Like, it does what it needs to do, so I can't really hate on it, but I would have loved to see the vertical stand included. Up here in Maple World, I can't even find this online, so I'm gonna have to keep an eye out. Still, in comparison to the OG PS5, this system is definitely smaller. Setup is the same as before though, simply hook it up to your TV or monitor and go through the motions of signing in. The shitty part is waiting for your big ass games to download, but outside of that, we still have that same great PlayStation 5 user interface. And since this might be the first PlayStation for so many people watching this, I will be touching on the apps, settings, UI, and media apps, but the thing that pulls me back to earth every single day is definitely the gaming experience. For myself, the latest generation of consoles has been a huge leap for me personally, and I find myself playing on my gaming PC less and less. And of course, since I do make YouTube videos, I do get relentlessly roasted for playing on console. For those people, obviously dude, it's a gaming PC. They're way more expensive and they're more powerful. Trust me, I know I have one right here. I just like my PlayStation, okay? Still, with 4K gaming support alongside 1080 and 1440p, regardless of your resolution, you'll see huge benefits even if coming from a PlayStation 4. Now, between the insane load speeds on the SSDs as well as HDR support, just about any game on here looks incredible. Even last gen titles like Red Dead Redemption 2 still shine. And depending on what display you have, you will have both variable refresh rate and auto low latency support. VRR is what allows your display to fluctuate in frame rate to best match what the PS5 is pushing out. Auto low latency or LLM is what reduces input lag, especially for those of you who are throwing down competitive games. And all of these features combined is what really makes the PlayStation 5 experience incredible start to finish. But it's not all just on the system itself. We also have these dope ass games that the developers are throwing our way, some of which can't be found on PC or Xbox. For myself lately, it's been Spider-Man 2 and Ghost of Tsushima. These two games are simply beautiful and I'm starting to feel like I'm playing through an entire movie. And whatever you're playing since you do have that DualSense controller, it adds to the visual experience by giving you a physical one. For me, it comes down to the rumble and haptics as well as the adaptive triggers. With every action you make in game, you're getting a tiny bit of feedback in your hand. If you're slinging webs around in Spider-Man, the webs give tension to your triggers with an added whoosh from the built-in speaker. If you're drawing a bow in Horizon, you feel the rumble of the strain of the bowstring alongside the trigger. And to me, that's just badass. Not to mention there is a built-in mic if you need it, alongside the headphone jack for a headset where you can hear all the awful things people say about your mom in the Call of Duty lobby. And while not mandatory, I can definitely recommend PlayStation Plus for anybody on PlayStation. Between the online play, as well as all the monthly games you get to have in your library, it offers a sweet amount of choice when it comes to what games you do want to play. 
You also have a massive back catalog of games to choose from to either download and play, and you're now able to stream them directly if you just want to give them a try before downloading. Now I mentioned there was one upgrade that you can't see on the new PlayStation that wasn't available on the previous one, and that's more storage space. The OG PlayStation did come with 825 gigs, and the new one has one terabyte. Not massive by any means, but still a welcome bonus. Between PlayStation Plus and the massive sizes of games in general, I can say this easily gets eaten up super quickly. Still, the storage can be expanded super easily using an SSD, and this is simply done by removing the plate and installing it into the included SSD bay. You can now expand up to 8 terabytes, which is wild and expensive, but cool either way. Now one thing I mentioned before is how great the PlayStation 5 is in a desk setup. Regardless if you're 1080, 1440p, or 4K, everything looks impressive. For this setup, I am using LG's 1440p 240Hz OLED monitor, although the PlayStation 5 will only go up to 120. The smaller footprint of the PS5 is also great if you are using them on desk shelves like me, I just really dig how it looks. Realistically though, sometimes I'm working and need a break. For myself, just swapping to the PlayStation 5 is legit an easy way to decompress even if it's just for a little bit. Sometimes I don't want to step away from my desk. Now I mentioned gaming is a great way for myself to decompress, but sometimes it's actually just throwing on a Twitch stream or watching something quick on YouTube. The PlayStation 5 does have an amazing selection of apps throughout for just about anything you'd want to watch. And it's not just video either. The built-in Apple Music and Spotify work incredibly well, even while gaming, plus the new Discord chat support really closes the gap a bit to a gaming PC. From an overall media standpoint though, the PS5 does a great job at being a one-stop system for both games and everything else media. If you are considering something like an Apple TV, but also a PlayStation, just know this system does just about everything, including Dolby Vision and video up to 8K. Now with all these minor changes to the PlayStation 5 being smaller and having some more storage, I don't actually think that's what makes the PS5 so great. Yes, it's smaller and compact with some extra storage, that is an awesome bonus, but the PlayStation 5 in and out of itself is really what drives this home for me. Just finally getting cozy and playing a game at the end of a long day is invaluable, but this will also be different from person to person. Between the dual sense the fidelity of the games themselves, the overall package that you get for the price, it's actually straight up incredible. In my world, I find solace in this beastly, now smaller game console, and for me, it simply does everything. Anyways, that's been it. Thanks for watching. Till next time.